Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Boost Your Biology podcast. Today's special guest is what I would consider the best biological dentist that I know of, and he's also the author of a book titled It's All in Your Mouth. Today, we have Dr. Dominic Nischwitz. Dom, welcome to the show, man. Thank you, Lucas, for having me again. Love it. Awesome. Awesome. So maybe Dom, did you want to maybe share with my listeners a little bit about your story? I mean, you are well known in the biological dentistry space, but you're also, you know, a wealth of knowledge across various elements of health. So maybe share with my listeners, how did you become so fascinated with, you know, oral health and, and dentistry? So yeah, basically I studied dentistry from 2003 till eight. So it's a long time ago. That wasn't my purpose at all. I just by, let's say by Providence, I got uh, into a internship during, during my civil servant time at the Red Cross. And they put me into like dental, dental clinic. And I kind of loved it because I was, was able to extract teeth and stuff. So in, in hindsight, it was quite weird that I, I was able to do so. But I believe that the doctor thought I was a student. So I just applied to study dentistry overnight to get my, yeah, my spot. And then just started studying it because I thought, okay, I'm very good with my hands. I love that technical things. My dad is a dentist, uh, side note, but I never wanted to be one because he was one. So I anyways applied and yeah, just studied, realized I'm good with my hands, realized that this part is fun for me. But during the whole dental career, the whole, the, the whole five and a half or six years, something was missing. I didn't realize it by then, um, but luckily I realized that the university is just the entrance card for what's next. And during the time of dental school, I was already fascinated about what you would call biohacking today or health optimization, which was not a term 20 years ago because I crashed with um, health issues quite soon. Like when I was 21 years old, I got massively depressed and I had to find a solution for it. And at the same time, I was already starting with bodybuilding, training, fitness. So obviously I looked into nutrition, into supplementation, all during my studies in dentistry, when you have to do biochemistry, microbiology, all these sciences, so I got quite fascinated with the things, but just for me. And after dentist, mm -hmm. after after graduating, I had a very good residency with an oral surgeon because I wanted to become a surgeon straight away. And he was a, an amazing surgeon, but quite old school when it comes to dentistry. So he would still place the nasty looking silver amalgam fillings. And I, I just from an aesthetic point of view, I wasn't able to place those. So I told him, I said like, Sorry, boss, I cannot do it. I will bring in all the nice aesthetic ones. I didn't know about the toxicity issue, but I looked it up because he was like, why are you not doing amalgam fillings? So I researched it. I found this is when YouTube started kind of, and I found great doctors like Dietrich Klinghardt, Joachim Mutter, German guys that were very deep into integrative medicine, functional medicine, you would call it today, and, and talked about heavy metals and detoxification, oral health. And this is when it kind of clicked for me in this whole universe of functional medicine and all these things opened up and actually was quite nice because the five years before when I did all these things for my, for me personally helped a lot. So even, I don't know, you, you're good with training and stuff. And <laughs> back in the day, there was a, a coach called Charles Poliquin and he was yeah. already doing bios, biosignature things and kind of like functional medicine for trainers. So I also mm. had this cause already. So I was quite, quite interested in how to optimize not just my health, but I realized I can actually help patients get healthy overall by starting in mm. the mouth quite soon after university. This was, the, this was just the beginning 15 years ago. That's incredible. Yeah, I mean, I mean in, in the biohacking space, I mean, you're very well known, you know, and you've got a great audience. You've got a, you've, you've set aside you know, you carved out a niche really well and the information that you share is extremely useful and, and, and people need to know it. Like you're sharing information that people really need to understand and know about. And 
you know, I'm grateful yes. that I've met you and I'm grateful that we got a chance to connect at the, uh, at the biohacking summit in, in Amsterdam this year. <laughs> and also we, I think we also met at the health optimization summit, right? In London this year. I think you were there too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I love that these days. So this now is what I wished for 20 years ago. And I basically mm. became the doctor I was needing 20 years ago with all that studies involved, because luckily I looked into in university just as an entrance card and I developed the whole concept, which is now, which I'm now teaching dentists for 10 years and is obviously always um, evolving and mm. it's called biodentistry 3.0. And it's basically the, let's say it's basically the overlap of the high-tech dentistry, the high-tech biological dentistry, I must say, meaning that we only use biomaterials, no metals, no root canals, no cavitations. But it's overlapping with functional medicine, integrative medicine, and a term called biohacking or health optimization. And the German biohackers adopted me about five years ago. <laughs> Coincidentally, when I was interviewed by Max Gottsler, I'm quite sure you know Max, and he yeah. he has the flow, flow fest, and he interviewed me, and he was like, dude, you're like the OG biohacker, and you don't even <laughs> know about it. So I want to have you on my, on my um, convention or on my as a keynote. And this is when I met Tim, our, com uh, our mutual friend, Tim Biohacker. And he is now obviously the host of the Health Optimization Summit. And this is amazing because finally there is a tribe of people yeah. that appreciate it. But like you say, the information I'm sharing, I believe in integrative medicine or functional medicine, as well as biohacking or health optimization, whatever you want to call it, that the mouth is part of the body and that teeth are an extension of your brain is quite well unknown it's but it's the i would say it's the most overlooked or underrated part in the whole body but it has an amazing impact because mm. teeth are not just hard biting instruments teeth are teeny tiny organs with a blood supply a lymph supply an autonomic nervous system and they're an extension of your brain they start in the brainstem and are basically the end of the trigeminal nerve which is quite important in nervous systems so Basically, whatever you do from a repair point of view in your mouth will affect the whole body. We can go into this way deeper, but the problem is no one looks there. And this is why on every single keynote, I would ask the audience three simple questions. It's also important for your audience. It's like, yeah, you do everything. Like, I, I believe your demographic is quite the biohacking and health optimization oriented. Yeah. Um, yeah, for sure. folks, I reckon, of course, <laughs> which makes sense because you're quite well known in this space. And even though you would probably focus on nutrition, supplements, all the natural tools, sunlight, exposure, circadian rhythm, cold exposure, infrared saunas, hyperbaric, intravenous, you know, all the things we're talking about. There's still a lot of people, even on the summit, that are still not superhuman. And this mm. is when I come in or when biological dentistry comes in. Because if you ask yourself three simple questions, do you have metals in your mouth? Stand up, remain standing. Do you have a root canal? Stand up, remain standing. And the third question is always, <laughs> did they remove your wisdom teeth? And mm. by the end of these three questions, basically the whole audience always stands up, even on the Health Optimization Summit, which, is in, which I find fascinating and insane because they would invest thousands of euros into, let's say, Strategies like IVs and stuff, but they haven't had the basics covered because no one talks about it. Dentists don't know about it and medical doctors all don't even look into the mouth. So this is really a field that we need that needs evolving. And it is the entrance to your body, right? Oh, 100%. And when, when you say like dentists don't know about it or they don't talk about it, they don't educate their patients, is this because they aren't taught <laughs> at university? Yes. Is that okay? So basically, dental school is you learn all the sciences. You, you study medicine. You basically, like the whole, the whole time you study with the regular MDs. But you have, mm. your, you have your dental practice because you need a lot of skills at the same time. So you will learn about physiology, examinations, about chemistry, biochemistry, all the sciences. But at the same time, you learn dentistry, which, which is basically stuck in the 1950s talking about ta um, taking only into consideration if the material we're using works for biting yeah mm. is it possible to repair teeth with 
metals. Yes, of course. Are root canals good to keep a tooth in your mouth for biting? Yes, no doubt about it. Can we remove wisdom teeth? Yes, we can. But did we take into consideration if the patient is prepared for a surgery? No, because we will do, we will learn about different, in, in physics, for example, we will learn that different metals right next to each other in a medium that is an electrolyte will act like, an, like a battery. That's just how battery works, right? Yeah. The, the electrons just um, go from, an, 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 what is this, cathode to anode, basically in English. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. the saliva is a electrolyte. So imagine you have a metal in your mouth. Just picture a propeller of a boat in the seawater. What happens over time? It gets rusty. The same thing mm -hmm. happens there. And this is just like there's a battery, there's ions. But what we are focused on in conventional dentistry is just does it work for biting, fixing teeth, smiles and pain? There's no consideration at all about the whole body, even though we're actually doctors. So in, in Germany, if you translate Zahnarzt, a, a German dentist is called a Zahnarzt, which means tooth doctor. But the doctor part is kind of like not looked at. Therefore, most of the colleagues that you will show my stuff right now, nine, I would say 99.9% .9 of all dentists worldwide, if they hear me talking, they think I'm a crazy, um, I'm a crazy, what is it? Um, woo woo talk or, or whatever. They, they a charlatan. Like a, like a <laughs> yeah, yeah, a charlatan quack, is like a quack. A quack, yeah, yeah. And you, they, you know, like MedWatch and QuackWatch and all these things. Obviously, I'm on that page in Germany too. Biggest conspiracy theorist. But because I'm doing it for such a long time, finally, yeah. it's becoming a little bit of a trend in Germany and also internationally. So at first, you get always ridiculed. So when I was 30 on stages talking in front of dentists, they would just not take really care of what I'm saying. It's just like this crazy young dude probably. Then when my book came out, there was obviously a lot of shit stones. So there was no, I think every single professor of every single university in Germany wrote me a love letter, so to speak, um, because they didn't like it. And wow. now it's finally becoming a little bit of a thing. Not really, if you see it's like maybe 0.0% of all dentists worldwide, but still considered a term now. So biological dentistry, you cannot trademark anything. It's just... Everyone can call himself that. And therefore, now for me is important because I want to change the way how dentistry and medicine is done totally by focusing mm. on the whole body. I just look into your mouth first and then optimize the rest. But I think this is not against conventional dentistry. It's just upgrading every single dentist's practice. So if they finally understand this, we can really help patients heal overall. And this is the part that still fulfills me to the day, even though I love the tiny mechanical things. Yeah. What about, I mean, let's look at it from a high level, Dom. Let's have a look at like, what can we tell about someone's health simply by looking into their mouth? And I mean, things like looking at the, the color of their tongue, the, yeah. the gums, Easy. like, yeah, sort of explain that. Yeah. So basically you can see your mouth as the entrance to that overall, to that overall body. If your body is the house you're living or the hotel, you're hosting all your microbes, then this is the entrance hall. And yeah. it's really that important. So at a first glance, you can see your teeth. And teeth should be hard as stone, white. And what happened is teeth, in the Western world at least, 90% of all patients, of all people have tooth decay. So that means mm -hmm. the teeth are not hard as stone anymore. Anymore, They just got softer and softer. Obviously, you can see this as an issue of overall health. Then we can smell do you have like a bad breath? Where is this coming from? There's obviously multiple issues for it. Then you can have a look into on your tongue. Is your tongue pinkish? Or is there a lot of, I don't know an English word for that, but is there a lot of fur on it? Yeah. yeah. What about your gum tissue? Is your gum tissue pinkish? Or is it red and inflamed and bleeding? Because most patients in the Western world have bleeding gums and tooth decay. And because of bleeding gums and tooth decay, there is the oral hygiene theory we learn in dentistry, which is, Use chemical mouthwashes, use fluoride containing toothpaste, use tooth floss. But this is only because our demographic or the people we see are generally unhealthy because a natural healthy body has no tooth decay. It's immune against tooth decay or, to or gum bleeding. But even that part is hard to explain dentists because they're just so into their, okay, there's bleeding. We need this mouthwash. There is maybe a bacteria. You know what I mean? 
So yeah. basically, if the entrance hall is shitty, usually the hotel is shitty. And you can say the yeah. same thing in the mouth. If, if the mouth isn't, doesn't look healthy, the rest of the body is not healthy. And it's actually the first sign of it. So if you get tooth decay, I know you have a de mineral deficiency or hormonal deficiency or maybe even are insulin resistant. So you can all see well, that in your mouth. Well, that's what I really want to learn about. And that's what I want to explain to the audience is like the teeth itself are not just made up of calcium, right? Do you want to sort of talk about some of the other crucial minerals that actually form, form our teeth? It has, basically, all minerals are in your teeth. I always see teeth as like an external hard drive to your brain. And if you look at two um, computers, the crystals they use, it's kind of like the same structure as a tooth. So it's a quite extreme crystal structure. There's everything in it. So the main part is hydroxyl appetite or appetite. Uh, I don't know how you say it in English. And yep. obviously, there's magnesium, calcium, phosphorus. There's all very tightly um, controlled in that teeth. And teeth in itself, like the outer part is called enamel. And this is where yep. you, this part should be as hard as granite, like naturally. Wow. But because we got convenient, we got softer, we didn't chew anymore, we eat softer processed foods, our teeth get soft. And the WHO, which is the World Health Organization, states that 70% of all chronic disease start in the mouth. But wait, they only look into dental disease, which is tooth decay gingivitis, bleeding gums, so to speak, periodontitis, it's the inflammation of the, of the bone underneath the gum, which is already inside your body. Those are basically the tooth diseases, the oral diseases. But what they're not taking into account, which is a way bigger part, is dental repair, which I touched mm. with these three questions. Are there any metals in your mouth? Because metals are used in dentistry in crazy amounts of metals, even metals you don't want to have into your body, like mercury. But metals, there's no function, the metals we use, there's no, no function to have them in your body. They will only desert, disturb your body, cause oxidative stress, cause toxicity, cause immune problems. So, but this part is overlooked. So no one thinks about dental repair because like the regulations also from the ADA, for example, is that fill in, fillings or crowns or even implants or crowns at least, they are classified as device, class two devices, um, basically like your glasses. Therefore, they, they are not in your body. They are on your tooth, like on, the glasses are on your face. And these <laughs> things don't need a toxicological report, obviously. And then wow. on top of this, crazy is also on top of this, us dentists, we want to do good things. Like no dentist wants to harm you. No way. No way. There's just a big industry. And there's also a medical law in Germany that states every single material we use below 1% of ingredients, we don't need to be informed. So we don't know. And even if you, if you think you have a titanium implant, there are different grades and they're oftentimes extremely like the surface is so dirty. You would never put it into your mouth despite even putting it into your body. Because for example, dental implant is a new root if you lost a full tooth. So you put a metal inside your system, which could be contaminated. And on top, if it's different grades, like a, a titanium grade six even contains nickel. And you know that nickel is one of the most allergenic um, metal there is. Imagine you put it into your system, right into your immune system. It's insane. No one thinks about it. And obviously yeah. people run around to every sort of doctor and try everything to feel superhuman but never look into the mouth because no one knows. And actually also all dental colleagues, even if they know, they're a bit afraid to speak up because there's always the board and kills your license. And if you can't practice dentistry anymore, then you got a problem. Well, you've got a, you've got complete freedom of speech here on my podcast. You can say, you can say whatever you want about that because uh, yeah, they'll appreciate it. <laughs> of course. And I'm already known as the biggest conspiracy theorist in the whole dental world. Anyway, so I can say whatever. You know how it is, and they either hate yeah. you or love you. So I, I'm, it's not about me. I just want to share information with you guys out there, but I also don't want to freak out your audience um, mm. because I realize over time, because I've given so many podcasts in the last three to four years, that people also need the solutions. So mm. if we talk, tell them, okay, you have these issues, don't freak out now. So if you have mercury fillings or amalgam fillings, just whatever we're talking uh, talk about in here is just to give you more information and tell you, yeah. oh, wow, there might be a chronic health trigger, a chronic stressor that you cannot biohack your way around. 
and you need yeah. a skilled dentist to remove it safely, but have a strategy, but don't freak out. It's nothing you need to do straight away. Yeah. Yeah. And this is critical because I'd imagine there'll be people listening in wanting to know, right. So Dom, like we understand that mercury fillings are bad for us. You know, we need to avoid fluoride toothpaste. You've mentioned these things. Maybe sort of talk about from a from a hygiene perspective, like a general, a good approach to maintaining optimal teeth health. Like, you know, should we be brushing? How often? Like sort of talk about the, the, the most optimal strategies. So let's all assume that all of you guys have never had dental repairs. You have perfect teeth, the, like no, not ever filling nothing like myself. I just had orthodontics, which is terrible in itself. But anyways, the <laughs> ideal strategy should be that you support your whole body with the right nutrients first so that your teeth are hard as stone, that you eat a diet or food that is natural, that in itself is harder to chew and will clean your teeth so that stuff doesn't stick. So, But this is stuff we need to establish because obviously most patients don't do this. And then just as a simple strategy, if that is, if your lifestyle is covered, then I would just, I personally just brush once a day, which is in the morning after, let's say 30 minutes after eating. And I use a toothpaste that is a supplement, so to speak. It is all natural. It contains no toxins. It has hydroxyl appetite in it as a active ingredient. It has even various minerals in there and vitamins to support it. You would basically look for something that is free of all the toxins, which, which are obviously the neurotoxin fluoride, always go fluoride free. Then um, don't no triclosan, no sodium lauryl sulfate, SLS, no per, uh, carrageenan, then even saccharin or sucralose makes no sense. Uh, this is just in your toothpaste to cover the nasty chemical taste. So they make it a little bit more sweet or pepperminty and just find something that is without these things and as clean as possible. I tell you this because I know I get so many questions. Which toothpaste do you recommend? I can't recommend one single toothpaste. I'm working on one. I can tell you this. But awesome. uh, yes. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be your biggest distributor in Australia, Dom. <laughs> you will be for sure. And it will, be, it will be there soon because then it's the way I want it. But therefore, because there's so many people listening and from all over the world, just find someone, something that is more natural. And then yeah. clean it once, maybe twice a day if you love it. I will then use coconut oil pulling on a daily basis instead of chemical mouthwashes because I have a per I would say perfect. I have an ideal oral microbiome. I don't want to nuke anything with chemicals. I just want something that is maybe that is soothing, that detoxes, that binds, and that is also antiviral and antibacterial. So extra virgin coconut oil is quite that. And oil pulling is super simple. It's an Ayurvedic strategy. You just use a, t um, a tiny spoon, teaspoon of extra virgin coconut oil, put it into your mouth, swish it around for about five at least to 15 minutes and then spit it in the bin, not the sink. And if you do this on a daily basis, it's also extremely good for your immune system because of the antibacterial mm. effect. And as you know, loads of these viruses, even the one we had a problem with the last three years, lurks in your mouth for a couple of days. And if you can spit it out and cleanse it every day, it's even better. And mm. number three would be tongue scraping. You probably heard of tongue scraping, right? Yeah. Yep. So super simple. Just take this scraper and scrape off the, the, the tongue, the ground of your tongue, where it comes out of your mouth or your throat. And at the beginning, you will feel that there's a little bit of stuff coming off. This helps with bad breath. This is also a detox. It's also antibacterial. And over time, if you do it consistently, there's nothing to scrape off really. It's, it's a strategy you need five to 10 seconds maximum. Super simple. I use a copper tongue scraper. Usually they are made out of plastic. It's fine too. The copper is in itself antibacterial and just lasts longer. So that's why mm -hmm. we use this. So it's all simple. Lifestyle first, cover your macros, nutrients, all these things. We can go into this, but then simple strategies. And important about the strategies is just that you be consistent with it. That's yeah. it. Adhering Once a day is good. Yeah, it's frequent and like consistent. That makes sense. In terms of um, obviously like you mentioned some of those factors there. Before you actually mentioned the autonomic nervous system. Now this is this will be fairly new to my audience. You know, the link between you mentioned. Teeth and, root, 
Uh, yeah, so sort of explain how it links to the autonomic nervous system. Okay, I get, in, get to this in one sec. I just add one thing to the oral hygiene. I spoke about someone with perfect health. Problem hmm. is 80% have no perfect healthy teeth. So therefore, yeah. you might need to do brushing twice. You might need to floss because you had dental repair and food is stuck in between and you have a lot of interdental problems. No problem. Go for it. But if it's all, all is healthy, it's not necessary. It's just a Band-Aid we developed. Okay, to your question. So basically, we have an autonomic nervous system. You know you, know you have the, the stress axis, which is the uh, hypothalamus pituitary adrenal gland axis, HPA. And we have a sympathetic and a parasympathetic nervous system. And your teeth have that too. So your teeth are directly connected to your brain stem. You can show it. Actually, you could show a B-roll uh, here from that one picture that I always show. The brain with all the nerves going to that teeth. So at the end mm. of this big nerve, which start, the nerve starts here, in the brain stem is called trigeminal nerve. Mm. And at the end of it are the teeth. So anything that happens on your teeth, like if you had, for example, let's say you have a mercury filling, which uh, heavy, like the black filling, if that's in your tooth, this mercury leaches out on a daily basis and goes into your tooth, into your pulp. There's a blood supply, limb supply, and your nervous system. And then the nerve transports everything into your ganglia, into your hypothalamus, into your pituitary gland. The pituitary gland of dentists, which drill out mercury a lot, it's a study, have the highest levels of mercury. And we know that mercury makes you crazy over time. You know, the mad head <laughs> disease. So mercury makes you think weird. And because of the inhalation, because we drill it out all the time without protecting our den us dentists. So this is something dentists need to learn. So the autonomic nervous system can be in stress mode, for example, just because of a mercury filling or any metal at all, or because you had a root canal. A root canal basically is a devitalized tooth. The tooth is not alive anymore. That means no blood supply, no limb supply, no autonomic nervous system. You basically just clean it out as a dentist. It's a really fine skill, no doubt about it. But... You leave a dead part in there and it's only a matter of time until this gets reinfected with oral, my, with oral microbes that are anyways living with you, especially anaerobic bacteria. They just go into that and there's a tiny dentin tubal system in each tooth, which is about a kilometer of length for one root. And they live in there and they strive in there and they produce the metabolites called thioethers and mercaptanes, which can become toxic and stress your nervous system and activate your immune system, you will always have a chronic silent inflammation with cytokines like TNF-alpha, IL-1, NF-kappa-B. You know the, the critical ones. And you know that they work systemically. So whatever chronic stress, basically chronic inflammation is the core of every chronic health issue. We're living in an epidemic of chronic health issues. So we want to minimize chronic inflammation, which is chronic stress. You know, there's so many things that are stressing us, us chronically on a daily basis, putting us into fight and flight, nutrition, your diet, DMFs, electromagnetic fields, pesticides, various things, you know, but this is what we do in biohacking or health optimization. We take care of this and live more naturally. But what is the most unnatural part in your body that you cannot biohack your way around, but leaves you with a chronic inflammation in your nervous system, in your brain is dentistry. And no one thinks about it. Dental repair, root canal, cavitations, we didn't even touch it. Those are harboring chronic uh, infections and cause chronic inflammation through cytokines. And I didn't even talk about the toxicity of things. So, so many things that affect your whole nervous system and actually your teeth and your jaw is an extension of that nervous system. It is your nervous system. It's like your eyes. Mm. Yeah, it's really attached to here. That's why tooth pain is one of the worst pains ever. Hmm. You know that's you um, it? Mentioned, it was a, yeah. Like, that makes a lot of it makes a lot of sense. I mean, that's definitely it. I mean, from my perspective, that level of education really should be paramount for dentistry. And I, you know, it surprises me why you don't just set up your own independent <laughs> school. Now it's for, coming <laughs> because you just mentioned. Yeah, it surprised me. I did. I trained dentists for ten years now. Yeah. Up until 2019, right before the pandemic, I had like, let's say, almost every weekend, I was giving seminars and courses called Masterclass in Biological Dentistry and Ceramic Implants. We have a curriculum to become a specialist. 
but it was actually it was quite slow to train page uh, people that way mm -hmm. Luckily, there was a pandemic and everything shifted into online and things, even the industry. So for the last three years, I basically thought, how can I reach as many people as possible? First of all, patience with my knowledge and with that information. But second of all, how can we help these patients? Because I cannot do it on my own. It's not possible. So even though patients fly in from all over the world, I find it crazy. I think we need a full army. So therefore, for the first time, in history, I think even in whole dentistry is quite rare, there will be a Biodentistry 3.0 online certification course, which is starting in January 2024. So basically in six weeks time from how we recorded today, which is wow. early uh, mid-December. And yeah, it's a 30-day online course, which gives you as a dentist, if you are an open-minded, young and wild, or even old and wild, but open-minded dentist, who really feels that we can help patients, not just with dental repair, but with, with the health part too. And this is the thing for you. And you basically, this is the fastest way to get all that information because it's about your mindset. It's about chronic inflammation. You will learn about the whole, my whole nutritional concept, the food designing. You learn a whole, everything about the bone healing science, which is supplementation. And obviously about all the oral health issues like metals, root canals, cavitations, what to do about it. And the online option also comes with the option to shadow with me so there is mm. the option to book because this is what people ask me or pay there, there are a lot of dentists ask me and i never had a back end i only had a huge front end because the community grew and grew and grew and <laughs> within the last two years i had so many inquiries from dentists that i thought okay if i don't do it now it's over so i need to do uh, it's I, I turned it into a must uh, and it you know how it is like writing a script yeah. For a online curriculum, it takes it's it's took me longer than writing my book, but I wanted okay, to make exactly. it so good that dentists will get it instantly and the whole team too. So it doesn't yeah. make sense to that's what I did before. I trained dentists over weekends and then they came back very enthusiastic, but the whole team didn't get come with it. So basically created chaos in the clinics. But now I want to have this certification for dentists to be biodentistry certified which means mm. I will also have a list in the future hosting these um, dentists worldwide that went through this certification so I can tell patients, okay, here I feel good, you can go mm. there. Because at the end, if I refer, it always comes back to the source. And I yeah. did that before. So it will have the second option to come in and visit and shadow, but and even then come in with cases. Because when it comes to dental repair and the high-tech part, I'm like you said at the beginning, I'm actually very well known in the dental world as one of the first ceramic implant specialists worldwide. So there's a lot of teaching, but I think the technical part is taught the fastest. Yeah? yeah. You can teach a dentist who is very skilled. You can teach them the techniques like very fast because if they can do an implantation, to change into ceramic implantation is different, but it's not rocket science. But mm. the difficult part is the mindset, the switch to understand that you're not just repairing, that you can repair and at the same time help patients. And therefore, I streamlined the nutritional concept, the bone healing protocols, all the IV protocols, everything we do is all streamlined. So I, I'm able now to copy this and give this away because it's not about me. I want to help people. And if you can then grow local communities, even in Australia, there's basically no one. There's no one in Australia. I have a good no friend, one. Stephen Lynn, but he's more an orthodontist. But funny enough, when I put out the, the first call to actions in Instagram for that online course, I just tested it like with really weak yeah. CTAs. Like just basically put a picture of me and it's like, for the first time, there's, a, there's this long overdue course. DM me if you're open-minded. Do you know, <laughs> you cannot imagine how many DMs I got. And then I only had a wait list and they had a call with my team. And the first one came from Australia. How cool is this? So there's That's one awesome. in Australia who wanted to become a new, a new um, real bio, I call them the real bio dentists or real bees, which is like Wu-Tang killer bees. And it, it should be a, it, it will be a platform for a whole community of, let's say, game changing dentists or future dentists that know how to optimize health overall. And they also in themselves have fun doing this. It's mm. not to take yourself too serious. It's about changing the world and helping many people. Therefore, it's a co-elevation thing. It will be a, mm. a huge platform. Finally, I started it. So 2024, let's Congrats. go. Congrats. I'm excited Thanks, for that. Yeah, I'll make sure to, once that's released and up and running, I'll make sure to share it to my audience and my listeners because, yeah, it's going to be, 
I can only imagine the level of detail and the like the level of effort that you've put into it would be just incredible. Yes, and the goal was, you know, can imagine if you do something for 20 years, you become quite the professor and the nerd because I went into every <laughs> rabbit hole. But my goal is not to confuse these people. I funneled all the knowledge down to what can we do on a daily basis to not distract the dentist from his work, but upgrade his work and his team and at the same time, help the patient as fast as possible because you can have results, extreme health results within a couple of months if you start at the source. Problem is most people forget the source. They start heavy, heavy metal detox while you still have heavy metals in the mouth or root canals or cavitations. This is like showering and trying to rub yourself at the same time. But at the same time, it causes havoc in your body. Remove the source mm. first. And this is the goal in this course, to make it easy, applicable, and for everyone as streamlined as possible. Yeah. I want to actually want to touch on a little bit around nutrition and food yes, design. Please, please <laughs> explain to my audience, you know, some specific foods. I mean, I guess looking at it from a bioavailable nutrient perspective, I'd imagine like vitamin K2 and these organ meats would have to be beneficial, but sort of explain to my listeners what the importance of nutrition yeah, the food design is basically developed to support your body with the right nutrients that support healing, supreme healing. Mm. Ma basically make you anabolic. This is bodybuilding, so to speak. Because if <laughs> you have tooth decay, <laughs> yeah, because if you have tooth decay, it's like osteoporosis of your teeth. You mm. pro probably also have osteoporosis in your bone. You just have a critical lack of nutrients. So if you just come from your and if you have bleeding gums, you also have sorts of um, inflammation and antioxidative issues. So free radicals, all these things. So obviously, Weston Bryce comes in quite handy because he already did a... Weston Bryce was a dentist, you know that? I call him the I first biodentist. That. Yeah, he was the chairman of the American Dental Association and he was the biggest opponent against root canals. No one knows about it in the biohacking world. He did the craziest studies with root canals because he believed back in the day he had no, no studies. He was just like seeing that his patients develop chronic health issues. With, and he correlated it to root canals. So he asked his patients to take out the root canals. He implanted these root canals into rabbits, thousands of rabbits. And he found amazing results, which he called the focal theory. So every, like whatever health issue the patient had, 80% of the same health issues developed in the rabbit. If it was heart issues, it was 100% the same. So this is what he did. But he also, as you know, traveled the world to find, find um, let's say, he wanted to look for the connection of food or the new processed foods with dental or physical degeneration. So he visited mm. the Aborigines, he visited Swiss Alps, he visited African tribes and realized that those people that ate their ancestral diet had beautiful teeth, no scoliosis, perfect straight teeth, space for all the wisdom teeth, nose breathing, no tooth decay, no gum inflammation, all the things. But he also saw that all the ones that say the younger generation that had, that had contact with the newer processed foods, meaning flour, um, sugars, refined oils and stuff, were totally, let's say, degenerated no space for the wisdom teeth, gingivitis, gum inflammation, lots of tooth decay, spacing issues, and mouth breathing. Basically how our teenagers look these days. So this comes in quite handy, and he just also realized how to reverse tooth decay by using something he called uh, Activator X, which he realized was in butter from grass-fed cows, and, um, and vitamin D3 from omega-3 fatty acids, like fatty fish. And the, the, the activator X was later discovered by Chris Masterjohn to be vitamin K2, which you just touched. So my bone healing protocol initially started obviously in this. So I'm very in a niche with biological dentistry. But in this niche, I'm even more niche because I'm a, a ceramic implant specialist, meaning I don't do a titanium implant. I'm an oral surgeon, but I play ceramics. And I realized quite soon with this real realm, that patients that are not in a supportive state, they're not anabolic, they can't heal these implants because a titanium implant heals with a chronic inflammation, cytokines again, which help actually in the initial um, osseointegration. But it's ongoing stress. 
And mm. a ceramic implant is completely neutral biomaterial, which doesn't osteointegrate if your body is not anabolic. So I developed the bone healing protocol from that niche, meaning wow. I looked into the science of bone healing. Obviously, the first thing is vitamin D3, because you need vitamin D3 to get calcium, basically calcium from the large intestine and the kidneys into your bloodstream, and then activate a couple of enzymes like osteocalcin and MGP to then, um, to then regulate bone metabolism. But... To make that sufficient, you need vitamin K2 as a co-driver to bring that calcium from the bloodstream into the bones and teeth to make them mineralized. And as a third, let's say as a third driver or co-driver, you need magnesium also to transport the minerals. So there's a solid bones uh, science because vitamin K2, for example, activates uh, osteoblasts, which are the tiny t cells that build bone. Also newer research, which is quite new actually, shows that melatonin also does it. So we have mm. the daylight hormone and we have the nighttime hormone. You know that melatonin is nothing just about sleep. It's basically produced in every single mitochondria and is a major antioxidant, but also helps with bone healing. So the bone healing protocol that I initially invented 10, more than 10 years ago was around 20,000 IUs of vitamin D3 a day. Yeah. And therefore, I had to know how all the cofactors work, zinc, magnesium, K2, boron even, B vitamins, omega-3 fatty acids. But I'm not a fan of using micronutrients in itself. I'm a fan of optimizing nutrition. And this is when I designed the food design concept in three steps. The food design concept is there to get you out of stress mode, to be anti-inflammatory. So therefore, step one is always remove the call for, which is the pro-inflammatory foods, the processed foods, sugars, flour, refined flour, especially grain, gluten-containing grains fine vegetable oils, as well as um, conventional dairy, so to speak, not raw A1, raw A2 is fine. And this is step one, to get them into healing mode, because I don't want to have any stress during my surgery besides the surgery in itself. And step two is think, learn to think in nutrients, macronutrients, protein, carbohydrates, fats, protein as the building block of life, is super important for bone building and tissue building because we need nice gums too. And I want them to be anabolic. You know, at the same time, obviously the whole body heals, but I'm starting with the mouth because this is what we take mm. out and what we can take in. So protein goal is for every single patient, two gram per ideal body weight, which is one gram per pound of ideal body weight. Um, at least all my patients do this. And I'm more a fan of animal proteins because it's just easier than plant-based proteins. But thinking in nutrients is a concept that is an umbrella above all the mindsets because it has to work for vegan as well as a carnivore because I see all sorts of different mindsets in my clinic, thousands of patients. And it has to be very easy, applicable, and super simple to design the regimen. And then level three would be, I see the patient, I see his body composition. I see, for example, he has a lot of body fat in the middle. So I know his issues is insulin, um, blood sugar regulations, cortisol, stress management. So then I will look at tire three, which is using maybe tools like a ring. I have two mm -hmm. right now and <laughs> see the average nighttime HRV and qualify the nervous system again. So if I see this person, person is a sympathetic person, a balanced person or a parasympathetic dominant person, I will then adjust the energy nutrients, carbohydrates and fats accordingly to this. Because there are people that need carbs, there are people that need fats. Some are balanced. I can see this and this, these three levels, obviously these thousands of, of hours of studying and seeing every single nutritional concept, but I wanted to make it streamlined and easy. And within five minutes, every single one in the clinic need to be able to design the regimen for the next four months to bring that patient into anabolism. And anabolic just means building tissue, not being catabolic, which a lot of patients are actually. Chronic stress, catabolic, they cannot build tissue. And, but this is when we do surgery, usually we just do a surgery. Mm. We don't even tell patients to do this. So it started with vitamin D3 and high doses, but now the whole bone healing protocol, the, the name is actually not correct anymore because it's more like an overall health matrix protocol that takes neurotransmitters into account, whole, all your hormones, blood sugar regulation, cortisol management, healing your gut and your gums at the same time while building tissue. So within that time of six months when they come see us and then when they're finished with their new teeth, in between is always a healing phase of the surgery. Like the, the implants have to also integrate. 
they heal overall. Usually they lose 10 mm. kilograms of, of uh, body weight or build muscle at the same time or just, re just remove their chronic health issues. I'm working on the source. I'm not working on a symptom. Therefore, I bring patients during surgery in a parasympathetic mode and then teach them how to stay in there and build because I think this is all easily streamlined. Obviously, when they're in the clinic for Health Optimization Week, we also use intravenous nutrition, various different protocols I've designed, hyperbaric oxygen chamber, uh, infrared saunas, laser in your veins. We have everything. But this is only at that time. But the time to go see me starts four weeks in advance and goes again for next six months at least. And hopefully, I'm able to teach this patient to make the flip and stay in that mindset of optimizing their health for a lifetime because that's what it's all about. Yeah. And this is why I come in, just optimize it, bring that unhealthy body, help that he unhealthy body to heal by taking out the crap. It's the biggest detox in your life. Take out real metals from your mouth safely and root canals and take care of the cavitations. You can't imagine how much impact this has on your nervous system, your detoxification system, your neurotransmitters, your hormones. It's insane. So it's all yeah. combining it. It's incredible. No, you've done such a good job at um, leveraging so many different tools. And I guess like not only through what you've taught other dentists, but like even the things that you're saying here, I mean, there's a number of people that are going to benefit from this sort of information. And and really your toolkit, after how many years later, your your toolkit is so holistic that no other dentist probably has anywhere near as many different like tools to, to, to pull as like a lever. Um, and I think that's what separates you from other dentists out there. Yes, definitely. And luckily I have, at, I do it for 20 years now. It's about half my life. And luckily in retrospect, I got sick and I had to, I had to search for solutions because twen um, in 2003 being depressed, there is no Google, there, uh, no, no YouTube, no Dr. Google, it's just your regular doctor tells you you're depressed and, and I just wanted to be normal again. No one could help me. So I could either, either jump or find a solution. And I'm the guy who searches for solutions because I, I won't give up. And now in retrospect, I'm actually quite happy that it happened because when you're in there, it's not really nice, as you know. <laughs> but also, obviously, patients tell me this if they see, when they see me. I'm quite real because of it because I know the, the side of them too. And I'm only just always a step ahead and I feel that this is, the, this is our moral obligation. If we know as doctors, we should take care of ourselves a lot and optimize to be able to help patients do the same. We're just leaders, so to speak. Like in an airplane, you take the, the, if something happens, you're always taught to use that um, oxygen for yourself first, right? Before you help others. Yeah. Same here. Yeah. And this is why all the dentists, the real bio dentists, the real bees, they learn on themselves and then they get that mindset like myself. Then they have the moral obligation because you cannot change it. If you, if you saw it once, if you understand it once, if you see what I saw in terms of changing people's lives, you cannot come back back. It's not possible. And I have one of my best friends from school, from university. He was always like this. When he saw me, he's like my best friend, but always do it. Go away with your crazy things. Yeah, because when I <laughs> took supplements in university, I was eating out of boxes all day long. He was just thinking, such an idiot. And But at one point, he's a very good dentist. But at one point, he got depressed too and had huge problems. And then he asked me and he got, he got really, really interested in it. But he was afraid that he could never learn all this. But then mm. for some reason, it switched and he became fascinated and he thanked me for it and said, like, dude, you basically changed my whole life and dental career because now I can focus on repairing teeth, but bio biomaterials, which is actually more exclusive, and help these patients. And he is now also an ambassador for, the, for that whole thing. So because he understood it, he felt it on himself and he knew this is it. Then And then you become a true, I wouldn't say, maybe you become a healer because it is... We are working with patients. I work, I'm working with thousands of patients for the last 15 years. It's different than just testing it on yourself. Obviously, I'm testing on myself, but I want to apply this knowledge to as many people as possible. But also, I want to be able to see, okay, this, peop this person needs exactly this right now or this timing. Timing of 
timing of different modalities is quite crucial. And therefore, the initial 80% are already covered by changing the nutrition, lifestyle, using the right supplements. They're already quite good. I haven't even seen them. Then we take out all the oral interference, metals safely, even titanium implants, root canals safely, and we have solutions for it. So immediate ceramic implants, which is a biomaterial, is possible. So we're taking it out and doing it at the same time. You can see that on my Instagram. I finally posted a dental case again after four years. So you see <laughs> what we do. And then helping make this experience as easy as possible on the body by using tools from biohacking that help with healing during that time. So they don't even have a swelling or pain or a lot. It's a very minimal invasive procedure. Then sending them out to heal and do their lifestyle changes and then coming back. Obviously, you have a big lever here because they want to have that stuff done and they know in order to repair it and heal, they have to change their lifestyle and nutrition. The good thing is during that time frame, they realize, oh, wow, I'm getting so much healthier. They don't want to change anymore. So the lever is also obviously that dental repair is also quite expensive. So it hurts and they want to have that change. So we can really change every single patient. And I always say every patient that comes to us because it's quite difficult to apply for an appointment or apply to get into, let's say, the club. Everyone that makes it is on the same mission. I feel that every single one is a friend. They change, they heal themselves. And if you heal yourself, you can change the world. And I think when we, us, we talk about it, you have an amazing audience and you share and spread the knowledge. And um, yeah, I'm more like in the field, so to speak, and, mm. and fighting the, the war zones. But we have to talk <laughs> about it so that people know there is the field. And therefore, I'm very, very much um, appreciate you and that you're doing this and share all the knowledge and learn so much about all these things. Because I think mm. there's much more. And it, I, I think it's only about to start to change the world. Because imagine if everyone is just, just like healthy and in a good mood and has no yeah. dental, dental interference or even knows about it. How many people Jeez. can we help? It's insane. If we all, that's why I always say we are the wolf pack. If all us wolves co-elevate each other in that space, dude, we can, we can do so many more things instead of doing our own thing all the time. Love it. Love it, man. You're really, honestly, you're really inspiring and, um, yeah, I mean, you're, you're definitely on an incredible mission and it's, it really is a revolution what you're creating and for you, it's going to be an incredible legacy as well. Like you're going to be leaving a, a positive remark, in, you know, in the entire dentist dentistry space and, you know, a number of people are going to remember you, um, for, for many, many generations onwards. So yeah, I want to say like massive thank you for what you're doing, the information you're sharing. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm super excited to see what happens over the next 12 months with this, this school that, that, you know, that you're, you're building out. Um, so yeah, yeah. Really impressed. Yeah. I think the idea, thank you so much. I uh, appreciate it. Get goosebumps if you tell that, um, because I feel <laughs> luckily that is a big mission and this is, I think every single one of you guys out there, you need something that wakes you up in the morning and just, you jump mm. out of bed doesn't matter what your ring says. You're just still on fire because there is the mission and <laughs> you just want to help patients. And I'm actually a very, probably would be qualified as a visionary. So yeah. creating things, <clears throat> concept, even though I love doing surgeries, I will probably step out of this a lot and just teach it more in the next future. The next time I have to, but I think the platform, the biodentistry universe, maybe working title is going to be, open that means i can bring in all the other wolves with their special specialty like for example bring chris gethin and myself you know chris yeah yeah yeah, yeah. mutual friend he's one of my best friends and tim is one of my best friends so they mm. all have their unique stuff or oh, ben greenfield good friend so they can all come in and teach the dental tribe because all the new dentists the bio dentists they want to be health optimization specialists too and they have to start on their own body they want to be. They want to have their sports and how to implement it. So I think it's going to be a huge thing. The whole platform, the whole ecosystem for them, and then obviously for the patients, it's the same. Yeah, yeah. teaching all no, of it's them. incredible. Huge, huge, Thanks, um, huge respect, brother. Um, I'll make sure to leave everything linked in the podcast show notes. But otherwise, did you want to let my audience know where they can, you know, connect with you on Instagram or your website as well? Yeah, the the best thing or the easiest thing is actually the Instagram. 
because it's kind of like funnels everything into one place in the, you know, in the bio, there's always a link and yep. you can find my website there, which is the DNA health and aesthetics in my hometown here in Tübingen center for biological dentistry. You probably link it anyways, dnaesthetics.de slash en. And there's a lot of information. My YouTube channel has a lot of longer information because Instagram mm. obviously is only snippets. Um, <laughs> as you know, out of context, oftentimes taken from such an interview. <laughs> But you find so much more. There's my book. It's all in your mouth. And then for the the real bio, for the bio dentists or the, the let's say you young and wild, open minded dentists listening. Again, there's also a link to a wait list for that up upcoming course if you're interested to change something big time. Incredible, incredible. Well, I'll make sure to leave those linked in the show notes. But otherwise, Dom, pleasure to chat again, man. This is the second time. We'll definitely connect face to face. Um, at Definitely, the next, man. probably the next speaking event, we'll both be speakers at the next one, but, um, yeah, massive respect at, um, what you're doing. Yeah, man. Same. Thank you so much, Lucas, for having me again. And yeah, let's just all co-elevate each other in that space because I think it's much needed. That's it. That's it. Thanks. Dumble. Uh, we'll be in touch. Take care, man. For sure.